So guys, we made it to the middle of June, which means that if you are a class of 2020 graduate like me, you have either graduated last month or are graduating this month. I personally had my virtual graduation last month and got my cap and gown back in April, which made me wonder, why the heck do we even wear such weird outfits for graduation? What is the history and symbolism behind the cap and gown? In this video, I'm going to be discussing just that starting with the iconic square motorboard cap. Perhaps the most distinctive part of the graduate ceremonial attire, the origin of the cap dates back several centuries to the year 13 and 11. It was in that year when churches were said to have created the biretta, which looked like this and was used by Catholic clerics and scholars. Because higher education was heavily intertwined with the church during medieval times, it would only be a matter of time before the universities of this era developed something similar to the Beretta. Surely enough, by the 1400s, the motorboard cap became a new addition to early European university traditions. The exact symbolism, however, is a bit debatable. As mentioned, the graduation caps we wear today are derived from the Beretta, which was a symbol of scholarship and higher wisdom. The motorboard gets its name from this thing, the flat board masons used while laying bricks and mortar. Hence, some people associate this cap with a skilled profession, a signature of mastery. However, most historians associate the square shape with the shape of a book, or the representation of Oxford University's campus quad, both of which again are symbols of scholarship. However you interpret it, the academic motorboard cap is now a universally accepted symbol of accomplishment, which is exactly what graduation is. However, under this cap, we all wear this gown. Why? Not unlike the caps, the gowns we wear to graduations in current times also originate from medieval Europe. As we know, the church was a huge deal back then, and when the first universities started getting established in the 1100s and 1200s, teachers and students alike wore clerical church clothing. In fact, most of the professors were priests and monks themselves, and the students often pursued the same pathway. Graduation attire sometimes comes with a hood, and this can be traced back to Celtic times, when priests wore capes to symbolize superiority and intellect. Another reason for these long gowns was temperature. Buildings back then lacked proper heating, and to keep warm in the winters, students wore long robes and hoods. Eventually, by 1321, Oxford and Cambridge prohibited excessive apparel in university ceremonies, in essence creating a uniform and promoting unity among students. This tradition was maintained for the centuries to come, and today we wear these caps and gowns in different school colors to represent our alma maters, all while maintaining a sense of unity with all graduates. At the end of graduations, graduates follow this tradition where they take this thing, the tassel, and shift it from the right side of their head to the left side. Unlike the actual cap and gown, this tradition is relatively recent, dating back to around the mid-20th century. See, when you start the graduation ceremony, the tassel should ideally be on your right, to signify that your diploma is still ahead of you. Once everyone in your class receives their diploma, your class is typically instructed to stand as a group and turn the tassel to the left side of the cap. This signifies that you have officially graduated, departing from your academic journey and Something entering the next chapter of your life. But obviously this year has been different, and for many of us, the situations we are going through right now both as individuals and as a global society, are uncharted territories. However, to echo myself from an earlier video, I still feel that there is a light at the end of this tunnel. A little while ago, I read something online which kind of shifted my paradigm on this year. Currently, in 2020, it seems as though everything is in chaos. However, think about the situation in 20 or 30 years into the future. If we all pull through it, our posterity probably won't see the early 2020s as a time of devastation, but rather as an era of change and improvements, be it in social justice, breakthroughs in medicine and innovation, economic reform, or a plethora of different improvements. Think of 2020 as a graduation of society onto itself, where we address some of the flaws we undermined as a civilization and fix them for the better. As I mentioned before in one of my previous videos, we as a humanity have been through situations like this before, and every time, we made it through. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and if you did, please don't forget to share it with your friends and family. 
especially if it's someone who has recently graduated. And next time, you got, you got something, something to think about.